In this video, we're going to specifically look at how to use the solver on the TI-8384 graphing calculators to solve an equilibrium problem. Um, you should have a pen and paper with you and be doing the problem with me as we go. So the question that we're looking at says that an equilibrium constant for this reaction of hydrogen and iodine gases synthesizing HI gas is 54.3 at 430 degrees Celsius. At the start of the reaction, we can see there's a certain number of moles of H2, I2, and HI in a 2.4 liter reaction chamber. When I see moles in a question and then I see a volume, I immediately think of the formula C equals N over V. I'm going to convert those moles to, to uh, molarities. Now, in this question, another thing that jumps out at me in that first statement is that everything was initially present in the reaction. There, were not, there was nothing that was left out. There are three substances in the equation, hydrogen, iodine, and HI, and all three of them were placed in the reaction. That's an important thing to observe because it means that at the beginning we don't know the direction of this reaction. Let me just write the equation again. This is my answer. Hydrogen gas plus iodine gas produces 2HI gas. And if I use that formula, C equals N over V, we can convert the moles to molarities. Um, I get these three concentrations. And since those were placed into the vessel, I'm going to set up an ice table because they represent the initial concentrations. So there was 0 0.298 molarity of H2 hydrogen. That's again the 0.714 moles divided by 2.40 liters. Doing the same thing for iodine, we get 0 0.410 molarity. And for the HI, there was 0 0.369 molarity. Now this question is one of the more involved questions in equilibrium because the situation we see where all three things are initially present. If there had been no HI, if the HI had been left out initially, then it would have started at zero concentration. If it had started at zero, then we would know that the reaction would have to go in the forward direction to make some HI. Something that starts at zero concentration has to increase in concentration. On the other hand, if we'd begun the reaction with 0.369 molar HI and none of the hydrogen or none of the iodine or perhaps neither of those, then the reaction would have had to have gone backwards. It would have had to go produce those things which started at zero. So when there's a zero on the initial line of the ice table, the question is a little simpler because we know the direction of the reaction. In this question, we don't know the direction. We don't know whether we should say minus, minus, plus, whether it's going to go in the forward direction, or whether we should say plus, plus, minus on the change line, meaning it's going to go in the reverse direction. To decide that, we're going to calculate the reaction quotient, Q. And that's done whenever you see everything present initially. Q is calculated the same way that we calculate Kc, so it's the concentration of HI squared over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of iodine. And where you would normally put in equilibrium concentrations to find Kc, we're going to put in the initial concentrations to calculate Q. And that'll tell us whether we're at equilibrium, and if we're not at equilibrium, what direction we'll go to reach equilibrium. So plugging these concentrations in, we get 0 0.369 squared over 0.298 times 0 0.410. And grabbing a calculator, please be sure you're doing this, not just watching the, the video. Um, we get an answer of 1.11. So initially, Q is 1.11. Now, how does that help me? I look back at the question and notice that KC was 
at this temperature. So we can say down here, therefore, Q is less than KC. Oops, I just wrote the wrong letter. So Q is less than KC. Now what does that tell me? Well, obviously it means we're not at equilibrium. If Q were equal to KC, we would be at equilibrium. We're not at equilibrium, so it's going to be a forward or reverse shift to reach equilibrium. Now, what direction do we go? If Q is less than K, then Q must get bigger to reach equilibrium. Q right now is too small, so it has to get bigger. How can a fraction get bigger? Well, to, for a fraction to get bigger, its numerator would have to get bigger, so the HI concentration will increase, while the denominator of the fraction, in this case the H2 and the I2, could decrease, so they could go down. So if the numerator increases and the denominator decreases, the value for Q would get larger, and Q could eventually equal K again. We'd be at equilibrium. So therefore, if the HI is increasing, that means the products are increasing, and the H2 and I2 is decreasing, the reactants are decreasing, then that tells me that this reaction is going to go in the forward direction. So down here, when I see Q is less than K, I know that's, a, that's going to be a forward shift to reach equilibrium. The, re the whole point of doing that is because now that I know it's a forward shift, I can say on my change line that the two reactants will decrease while the products will increase. If it had been a reverse shift, that would have been the other way around. The two reactants would have been going up while the HI would have been going down. Now looking at the problem, we don't know anything else to put in the ice table. There's no other concentrations to put in there, so that's a clue that we're going to now use algebra. So since I don't know what a number to put in, I'll use a variable. I'll say that the H2 loses x. Because its coefficient is a 1, we'll just say 1x. The iodine's coefficient is also a 1, so it loses the same amount, x. The HI's co uh, coefficient is a 2, so it gains twice as much. And so now at equilibrium, we have 0 0.298 take away x. We have 0 0.410 take away x. And we have 0 0.369 plus 2x. All right, so now we're ready to um, set up the KC expression and solve that. Let me just pause the video for a moment here. All right, so I'll just create a new page, and we're ready to set up the KC expression now. So the KC value is 54.3. And we've already written the expression, the concentration of HI squared over H2 times I2, so I'm not going to rewrite that, but I'll put in the algebra from my equilibrium line of the ice table. So in the numerator, the HI concentration squared is 0 0.369 plus 2x squared. And in the denominator, we've got the H2 concentration, so 0 0.298 take away x times the iodine concentration, 0 0.410 take away x. And now the chemistry is done, and we've got a math problem sol uh, facing us here. This is the equation that we need to solve. Um, now, when you look at this with through the eyes of a mathematician, you realize that it's going to be a complicated, irritating equation to solve. Sometimes the denominator is also being squared. For example, if the H2 and the I2 concentrations had originally been the same, then we might have had their 0.298 take away x, squared instead of 0.298 take away x times 0.41 take away x. If your denominator and numerator are both being squared, you can actually simplify the equation by square rooting both sides of the equation. That would turn it to a linear equation, which is a lot easier to deal with. This equation is going to be an ugly quadratic equation because we have this squared on top up there, and um, that's going to lead to a quadratic equation. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is use graphing, a TI-8384 graphing calculator 
to greatly simplify things. So if you've got your calculator with you, turn it on and let's go find the solver. The solver is found underneath the math button, so right underneath the alpha, the green alpha button here, there's a button that says math, so I'll press that. And as I scroll down the options here, on the first list of options, I should come across something that says solver. And on this calculator, it's got a zero in front. So once you've got the solver highlighted, you could just press enter. Now in the future, mine has a zero in front. So in the future, if I just press math and then zero on the keypad, that would be a quick way to get there. So I'll press enter to get the solver. And now what I want to do is this, this solver has been used before. Somebody has, um, it's going to raise that up a little bit. Somebody has uh, used this uh, feature before on a calculator. I can tell because there's an equation that's entered there and it was, its previous solution is there. So what I'm going to do is press the up arrow on the, on the calculator. It's an up arrow. And that'll take me back to see what the equation was. If I clear this equation now, so just press the clear button on the calculator, this is what someone would see when they first press the solver if they had never been used before. So equation solver, equation zero equals. The only weird thing about this is that it wants you to enter the equation in the form zero equals. If we look back at the equation we're going to solve, our equation says 54.3 equals. Of course, that's easy to change. If we just subtract 54.3 from both sides, we would have 0 equals, and then we have all of this algebra here, take away 54.3. So that's what I'm going to enter on the graphing calculator. So now the button beside the green alpha button says x, t, theta, n. That's your button to press for the letter x in algebra. So let's type in this equation and use um, brackets judiciously. So open a pair of brackets, 0 0.369, oops, 0 0.369 um, plus 2x, so plus 2, and then that x, t, theta, n button, so plus 2x. Close the bracket and square. And now divide by, open another bracket, 0.298, take away x, close that bracket, and since there's two things multiplied, two pairs of brackets multiplied, I'm going to divide first by the one bracket, and now divide again by the second bracket. So open another bracket now, 0.41 minus x. Now a very common mistake is to forget at this point to um, include that minus the KC value. Remember, we had to minus 54.3 to get our equation to say 0 equals. So minus 54.3. Take a moment just to look at that equation. Make sure you haven't mistyped something. That looks good to me. And so now press the Enter button. It takes you back to this screen. It's showing me here the, the solution to the last equation that had been solved. So it says x equals, and that really doesn't mean much. Um, down below it says boundaries, and this is where it's going to give me, you normally don't want to go down and play with this, but it's telling me the answer will be somewhere between negative 1 times 10 to the 99 all the way over to positive 1 times 10 to the 99. So don't worry about playing with that. Go back up to that middle line, x equals, and that's where your cursor is flashing. And now we have to do one more weird thing. We, we, have, we have to give the calculator a guess. We have to tell it that we think the answer is close to some number, and then the calculator will spit out the answer to our equation closest to the guess that we're giving it. In chemistry, our answers are never negative, and they're almost always small and positive. So for chemistry equations, almost always, 99.99% of the time, Putting zero as a guess is going to be a very acceptable way to do this. The answer is going to be very small and positive. It's going to be close to zero. So I'm going to say x equals zero is my guess. And now I'm going to press the green alpha button and then enter. And right above enter in green, it says the word solve. So I'm saying now solve the equation. And there's the answer, 0 0.229, 0 0.2286, 0 0.229 is the answer. So if I go back to my equation here, 
what I would say on the AP exam is simply from the TI-84 solver, x equals, let me just get that again, 0 0.229, 0 0.229 molarity. Now the question that we were originally trying to solve asked us to find the concentrations of the gases at equilibrium. So now we're going to have to take that value for x and put it into each of those three expressions to get the concentrations at equilibrium. So we can say the concentration of hydrogen at equilibrium is 0.298 minus x, so minus 0.229. The concentration of iodine at equilibrium was 0 0.410 minus x, so minus 0.229. And the concentration of HI at equilibrium was 0.369 plus 2x, so plus 2 times 0.229 equals. And so you could get those three answers. You can check your answer at the end, of course, because if you take the three concentrations at equilibrium and put them back into the KC expression, you should get an answer pretty close to 54.3, which was the KC value. So there's a good example of an equilibrium problem more detailed than some others we've seen, where you had to find Q to decide the direction of the reaction. We, we then used the TI-8384 solver to, to solve a rather ugly algebra equation. Again, on the AP exam, if you had to do a question like this, saying from the TI-8384 solver x equals is really all you need to include. You don't need to show the algebra solving that problem. So I hope that helps with using your graphing calculator's solver to solve equilibrium problems. Just